Sure, we all would love to have as much smart devices as we can. But sometimes you can get enough information to smarten up your smart home even with the simple devices. Today we are going to look at how you can get maximum out of the current devices that you already have inside your home. We'll start in a couple of seconds. As I said, today we are going to look at how you can maximize out of your system with current data you already have. I will be talking about one specific device, in my case or in this case, but it can be applied to any other device. You just have to play a little bit, be creative and you'll see. So what's the agenda? Let's say that you have a device that is not smart. It is smart in terms of it can do autonomous things, but you cannot hook it up inside your smart home. In my case, this is this Hooky Neomov lawnmower that I'm using and that I'm really loving. I will be not going into details about that one. You can check out the link to that video, which I did a couple of months ago. But as I said, this device is not smart in terms of what we think of smart devices. You cannot integrate it inside Home Assistant. There is no MQTT access at the time of the recording of this video, it will probably come in the future, but no, this is an autonomous device that I cannot get any information from. There is a smart app, but it's on my mobile phone and my home assistant doesn't know what's happening on the mobile phone. But still, I wanted to know what I can get from my home assistant for this untrackable and invisible device. And with just one smart device, and this is the Shelly Plug S, the old-fashioned Shelly ESP32 powered device that is doing the power monitoring, I know in what state this device is. For example, currently it is docked. If I click on it, I can see the state when it was recharging, but I also can see the state if the device is working, meaning that lawnmower is somewhere browsing and cutting the lawn. So how do I get that information from the device that is not a smart device. And question is what else can I do and automate with this information? For that, let's dig into the template sensors. As I said, we are having only one sensor and that is the power monitoring sensor from Shelly. And here is all of the magic. I've created a template sensor called Lawnmower Status, where I'm tracking the Neomo power. I'm also checking the previous state on Lawnmower and I'm also looking at the last change for that sensor because I will need that in future. So this is the main logic. We are tracking the power. If the power consumption is less than 0.9, and this is the idle watts used from the docking station, that means that the robot is not on the dock. That also means that the robot is in the state working. But there is one exception. If it's longer than 5 hours, that means that the robot is stuck somewhere and it didn't return to the dock. Why? The battery lasts roughly 3 to 4 hours, depending on the climate and what it is doing. So if it's longer than 5 hours, then the state of the lawnmower is in error. If the power usage is below 10.4 watts, that means that the device is docked. This is below the standard recharging voltage, but still higher than the robot is not there or idle voltage. And rest of the state is in the recharging state, meaning that if a power usage is above 10.4 watts, the device is recharging. Based on the state of the power monitoring sensor and the watts use, I know if the device is docked, recharging, working or in the error state. To make everything prettier, I'm using icons here, so that if it's in the working condition, we see the robot, if it's docked, we see power plug off icon, battery charging for the recharging state, and we also have alert. Else, we have help because something went wrong. Very simple system that allows me to see, at glance, what is the state of the robot more. But there are also some other things that I can do with the data. For example, if I track the amount of the time when the robot was not docked or working, I know how to do and when to do maintenance. 
I can track that state for the weekly, monthly and yearly maintenance. And for example, for me currently we have 21 minutes for today, 138 hours for this month and overall 253 hours for this year. Based on the manufacturer recommendations, I know when it's time to clean the robot, when it's time to change the blades or do some other maintenance. And all that is coming from, you guessed it, power monitoring. And based on that I can create two additional sensors, daily mowing duration and Nemo daily energy use. Ok, that's all nice, but what about automating everything, because we want things to get automated. You can do that also based on just one single sensor. For this lawnmower I get following notifications. I get the information when the robot starts to mow, this is this one here. Then I have information when it returns to dock, once again I'm monitoring the power usage here. I've set also my maintenance reminder to check daily if the mowing duration is over 600 minutes, which it never is. Then I have weekly, monthly and yearly maintenance reminder. For example, if we look at this monthly maintenance reminder, it is triggered if the time is 10 am, but only if it's Saturday and it's the first week of the month. So first Saturday of the month at 10 am I will get the notification about the maintenance and it will tell me how much the robot worked in the previous month and also it will check if it's more or less than 50 hours. If it's more it will tell me that I have to do maintenance and if it's less then it will just inform me about the time it was run but it will tell me that no maintenance is needed, which is a handy feature. Then I also have the stuck alert. As I said, I'm tracking the warning or the error state of the lawnmower. So how do we do that? When the lawnmower is in the state error, which we specified in the template sensor, each 30 minutes it is triggered. Once again, we check that the lawnmower is in the state error and the time needs to be between the 8 am and 8 pm. That means that if it's stuck during the night I will not receive notification but then again the lawnmower is not located where I sleep and live and that also means that I will not get nagging notifications during the bedtime. And if all conditions are met I will receive notification that Neomov has been stuck or is moving for more than 5 hours, which is impossible and also give me the current power usage. If you have camera that is for example looking at the field where the mower is working, you can also send yourself a notification or alert with the image. But this one is browsing all around and I wouldn't know which camera to pull here so I didn't play with the images in this case. But now let's look at the thought process, how the AI has helped me with that, but you also need to be creative and know at least something that you want to get out of the AI and put inside your home assistant. So let's start with this one. Let's imagine that I have another smart socket that is hooked up to my oil heater that I'm using to heat or preheat the space before I start the fire in the fireplace. Since this is a remote location, I want to be able to trigger that heater to start heating couple of hours or couple of minutes to preheat the space so it's warm enough when I arrive there. And this is a text prompt I've created. I have oil electric heater, dump one hooked up to smart power socket, switch dot heater that is monitoring power and turning it also on and off. I want to create for home assistant few automations to automate things. Can you help me with the ideas? This means that OpenAI will recommend a couple of ideas, but also I gave them in what direction I want to go. For example, make sure it is off when family leaves home zone. Make sure it's not running more than 90 minutes. If yes, turn it off. When I arrive, play TTS or text to speech, text on a speaker, media, player, dot living room, plus give me some ideas. We hit enter, give it a bit of time and it will probably think of something. It gave three areas or three categories. First one is core safety and energy savings automation. Second one is comfort and arrival automation. And three is extra ideas to make it even smarter. It is presuming that these are the entities that I have. Switch is oil or radiator. Sensor is oil radiator power. 
person.u is me or person.family member is the other people living in that home. Zone home is my home zone and this is the media player. First automation is this one here. Turn off radiator when everyone leaves home. It is triggered by the state of the group.family when it changes to not home. Condition, it is checking if the radiator is on or not, if it's in the on state and everybody has left the zone, it will turn off the oil speaker and also send a notification to my mobile phone, which is a great suggestion that I didn't give it to him, with the message radiator turned off because everybody left home, which is an awesome, awesome and very simple automation. The second one which I asked is to turn radiator off after 90 minutes. Trigger is the switch is in the on state for 1 hour and 30 minutes. After that, it is turned off. Once again, I receive notification that the radiator was on for 90 minutes and has been turned off automatically. Then we have this third one, which is checking the power usage of that switch. If it's below 5 watts for more than 10 minutes and the switch is in the on state, that means that something is wrong with the radiator or the switch itself or the socket itself, so it is automatically turning the switch to off state. Then we have comfort and arrival automations. We have welcome message when you arrive. When I enter the zone, zone home, on the media player in the living room at 50%, it will send notification, welcome home, my name, the radiator is and it will give me the state of the radiator. And if it's in the off state, it will also ask me if I want to turn the device on, which unfortunately with this speaker I cannot do. This is not a smart speaker, but still this is a very neat automation. Plus we also received some bonus ideas. For example, turn radiator on only if the living room temperature is below of something and turn it off if it's more than another temperature. Then we can set the night mode to automatically disable radiator between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. for safety plus energy savings. We can create a script warm-up living room that turns on radiator for 60 minutes and that can be triggered by some other smart assistant. We can also create a power monitoring dashboard so we can track the energy usage. And there is also this child lock safety mode if no one is home or everyone is asleep for the radiator off regardless of the schedule. So let's say that I want, for example, first one and the second one. Okay, before I do first and second suggestion as bonus ideas, I also want to create a ready import YAML. So I've sent it a prompt, sure, create first and second suggestion for the automations it gave me previously. And here is the code that I can just copy and paste in the automation YAML file and we will receive everything we need. Of course, we need to check entities. But now let's see for the bonus items. Give me for bonus ID automations for temperature based control and night mode. And this is the automation it suggested. We have trigger which is a numeric state of the living room temperature sensor if it's below 19 or above 22 degrees. Then we have selection of actions if it's below 19 and the device is in the off state we turn it on and we send notification that the living room is cold and the radiator is turned on. In the other case, we check the numeric state above 22 degrees and the radiator is in the on state. We turn it off and we receive notification that the living room has warmed up and the radiator has been turned off. And for the night mode, we have triggered time if it's 11 pm and condition oil radiator is in the on state. We turn it off and we send notification to mobile phone that night mode is active radiator turned off for safety. Also, in the morning, we check the time if it's 6 p.m. and the temperature in the living room is 19 degrees. We turn the switch on and send notification, good morning, living room is cool. But for this one, I want to make sure that there is at least one person in the zone. If nobody's at home, I don't want this to turn on. And we have now improved notification. It checks if it's 6 p.m., if the temperature is below 19, and also checks if group family, that means somebody in the group, is at home. If condition is met, we turn the switch on and send notification to mobile phone, good morning, somebody is at home, 
and it's below whatever temperature, so the radiator has turned on. But it also gives us notification that we should have group family set up and that it should include all the persons. And that means all the people that are living in that home. When you're satisfied with everything it has created and you copied everything in Home Assistant, and by the way, I will show you the simple way how you can do that, you can also play with it more. Can you give me additional ideas? Absolutely. Power consumption limit, auto shut off when window is open, overnight cool down check, presence and comfort automations, adaptive comfort control, usage summary, heat active indication light, and also some additional ideas. So as you can see, even if you have dump oil radiator or dump lawnmower that you cannot hook up inside your home assistant, even with the simple devices such as power monitoring switches or outlets, you can automate your home and receive much more than you anticipated. But for that, you need to be creative. You need to have at least one or two ideas of what you can do with it. And then you can play with the AI to receive some additional ideas. But please also note that not all of the automations that are here will work out of box. Use them as a guide to guide you on how you can create your automations. You can copy it word by word. For example, let's copy this code here. Settings, automations, create new automation, create new automation, three dots, edit in YAML and paste it here. Or you can use the UI editor to copy it by logic, not copy the YAML, but copy it by logic. Let's check it out here. When there is a change of the state or attribute for the entity switch.oil radiator, we have two options. If switch oil radiator is on, then we turn the light on. If the switch radiator is off, we turn the light off. Or dim the light or change the color temperature or color of the bulb. It's all up to you. So the point is, be creative. Use AI, talk with people, talk with the system, drink a coffee or a beer, get inspired and automate your home. Even with one dumb device and one smart plug, in this case we automated two things. First was the lawnmower that I'm using daily and the next one was this oil heater that you can potentially use in your summer house when you want to go there during the winter. I really do hope that you did find this video interesting. And if it was, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it really means a lot to me. But also while you are there, check that you are subscribed so you don't miss on the future videos. If you have any suggestion, comment, idea or something that you did yourself, don't forget to leave it down in a comment section below. I really love reading your comments. And before I wrap up the video, I must say thanks to all those wonderful people that are supporting me and that have become YouTube channel members. Thank you all for all of your support. But let's not forget each and every one of you who has watched, shared, liked or commented on my videos. Thank you. If you too want to support the channel, you can do so by clicking the join button down below and becoming a YouTube channel member for only 2 euros or 2 dollars per month. Or you can go to my merchandise store and get something there. Last but not least, you can always send me super thanks and I will be super thankful for that. I'll be seeing you next time. Until then, bye bye and have fun.